In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to segment a spine from patient CT data for the purposes of creating a lumbar puncture training phantom. Lumbar puncture is a medical procedure that involves placement of the needle between two vertebrae of the lumbar spine in order to access the spinal fluid to either administer medication or to collect it for the purposes of further analysis. This procedure is particularly challenging when there are deformities of the spine because it's harder to locate the space between the vertebrae. There are commercially available lumbar puncture training phantoms, however most of them only come with a healthy model of the spine. This is an example of the inserts that come with a commercially available phantom. So you can see that there are large spaces between the vertebrae, which is the easiest variation of this procedure. And it's put in this gel so that the trainee can practice inserting the needle. Our goal was to use the back model of a commercially available phantom and create custom inserts so that trainees could practice with more difficult anatomy. And we did this by segmenting a spine from CT data and then 3D printing it and placing it in a gel similar to this one. So the 3D printed part we created looks like this. It's got a hole through the middle for a fluid filled tube to go through so we can check for success rate and a reference holder in case electromagnetic tracking is used with this phantom. So I'll head over to Slicer and show you how to segment this um, patient CT scan and how to export it as an STL file for 3D printing. Now that I've opened Slicer, the first thing I want to do is load my CT data set. So I'll click and drag it into Slicer and then click OK. Once loaded, I'll go to the Volumes module to adjust the contrast. There's a CT abdomen preset that I'll click on. If I want to adjust the contrast to personal preference, I can also click and drag up and down. Now I'll nav navigate to the segment editor. In the segment editor, I'll add a new segment. I'm going to change the color here because it might be a little bit difficult to see. Okay, so now what we want to do is segment our region of interest and leave the rest behind. So we know that we want a section of the lumbar spine, which is the bone. So I think the first step is to segment the bone away from everything else. And for this, I'm going to use the threshold tool. The threshold tool is particularly useful when you have a structure of interest that has a large contrast difference from everything else around it, which we do have here. So this is already set to about the correct range, but as you can see, there are a variety of different values you can use. So what I want to do is encompass as much of the bone as possible with little speckling of the other regions. Now I'll use the islands tool. So as you can see here, islands are the connected components in a segment. I'm going to use keep selected island and click on the bone. And so what I hope to do is keep all of the bones and get rid of all of the speckling that's over here. So as you can see, that speckling is already a bit better. And now I'll use the scissors tool. And I'm going to use this tool to actually cut out all of the rest of the bones that I don't need and just leave the section of the lumbar spine I want to 3D print in my segmentation. So I'm going to switch to a clear view of the lumbar spine. And I'm going to erase outside. So what I'll do is draw a circle around the lumbar spine that, uh, vertebrae that I want to keep. Okay, so let's look at that in the 3D view. So there's a bit of noise that we'll want to smooth. Before I start smoothing, I want to switch to the 3D view only since we won't really be using this CT scan anymore, or at least not directly. And so here we have our segmentation in the 3D view. So we want to reduce this noise by using some smoothing tools. So I'll go over to smoothing, and the first filter I'll use is the closing filter. So I want to fill in these holes that are down here. And I'm going to use a small kernel size, and click apply. The next smoothing tool I'll use is the median smoothing tool, and this is quite a powerful one. And I'm going to go up to a larger kernel size because I do want quite an intensive smoothing here. So 
So this is our smooth product that looks much cleaner than it did before. Now, as you may remember from the beginning of the tutorial, we had a fluid-filled tube running through as if it was the spinal fluid. We want to make sure that our fluid-filled tube that's about one centimeter in diameter will fit through the spinal canal. So what I'm going to do is import a cylinder model that has a one centimeter diameter and align it with this canal. And then I'm going to subtract those segments from each other so that we know that there's a one centimeter space over here for us to fit that fluid filled tube. So I'll go over to my documents and click and drag my cylinder model and click OK. Now I want to move the cylinder to align it with that spinal canal. So I'll navigate to the transforms module and I'll create a new linear transform. And I want to apply this transform to the cylinder. And there's two ways that I can move this cylinder. I can either use the sliders to translate and rotate it. And I can also use the interactive view which allows me to actually click and drag the cylinder around. So, sorry about that. And so I'll just play around with it until I get this in the middle. This may take a little bit of practice, but that's okay. So this needs to be translated. All right, so this looks pretty good. Now I'm going to turn off the interaction view just so that I don't move anything on accident. Now what I want to do is go to the segmentations module and import this cylinder as a segment. So I'm going to go down and click import models and I'll import the cylinder model. So now we can see that yellow is a segment of the segmentation, just the way that this green spinal part is. Now we don't need that model that we imported anymore. So I'll go over to the data module and delete it from the subject hierarchy. And I can also delete the transform we used. So now I go back to the segment editor. And what I wanted to do was delete the section of the cylinder that overlaps with the segment. So what I'll do is select segment one, go into logical operators and subtract the cylinder model. Okay, so when I hide the cylinder model, you can see that we cut out all of the parts of this segment that overlapped. So I'm going to delete the cylinder now I want to add that reference holder, so I'll do a similar thing to what we did for the cylinder. So I'll click and drag it into Slicer and import the model. Now you can see the reference holder isn't quite where we want it to be, so I'm going to use the transforms to move it back to where the spine is. So I'll go over into Transforms and create a new one, and this time I will apply it to the reference holder. And so I'm just going to play around with the sliders until I get it into a position that looks like it works. So I want to make sure that the segment isn't coming through the back here because we want the full depth of the reference holder. Now I'll do the same thing we did for the cylinder. I'll import this model as a segment and then I'll add the two segments together rather than subtract them. So I'll go over to segmentations. And I'll go down and I want to import a model and this time I'll select the reference holder. So we can see that kind of marbled view so we know that that's the segment and it's kind of overlaying with the model. And we don't need the model anymore so we'll do the same thing and go over to the data subject hierarchy and delete it and delete the linear transform as well. And so now we have two segments of this segmentation. So what I want to do is add them together. So I'll go back to the segment editor, select segment one, the logical operators, and then add our reference holder. 
So now these two are part of the same segment, so I can delete the reference folder. And so now we just have one segment for this. Now I want to give this a flat bottom and clean up this speckle over here. So for this I'll use the scissors tool. So I'll use the scissors and this time I will erase inside. So what I'll do, do is loosely draw a kind of semicircle around the bottom where I want to um, flatten it and then it will be kind of auto-completed by the straight dotted line and that's what I want to use and I'm relying on for that straight line at the bottom. Okay, um, I might want to clean this up as well. There we go, just so that we don't have as jagged of an edge. And now I remembered that we had the speckle over here, so I'll use the scissors again and erase inside. Just draw a circle around that. All right, so we have our segmentation finished. Now that we have our finished segmentation, we can export it for 3D printing. So what I'll do is go over to the segmentations module and I will export the model to a new model hierarchy and click export. Now I'll go to save and what I'll do is deselect all the options and then I'll go down and select Segment 1, but I'll switch to .stl rather than .vtk. And I'll click Save. Here you see the finished product of two phantoms that followed a similar workflow, but have a different base piece or no base piece at all. So over here you have the STL file, similar to the one that was just created in the tutorial. And there is a 3D printed part on the left. Here on the right, there's another model of a spinal phantom. So you can see that you can create different products using the same workflow. I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial, and if you'd like further on information on using Slicer, visit slicer.org, and if you'd like to ask questions about using Slicer, visit discourse.slicer.org.